you know, um, I remember the last time I left the house without a gun. I'm about to tell you a story. <laughs> It was um, two years ago. I was a CNA at the veterans home. Sorry, is it going? Yeah. I was a CNA at the veterans home um, in Pell City. And shout out to anyone that's still working there because God love you. I am not getting COVID tested and my eyes and up my ass and everything, you know, twice a day or whatever it is now that they're doing. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but, um, that place, uh, <laughs> is not run right. I got out of there. But anyway, that's not what this is about. When I worked there, I finally, bless me, got my tax return from, from, you know, 2018, right? <laughs> and it was a good bit. Finally, after after all the work I did, you know, I had a good bit of money, and I was like, "Oh my God, I'm gonna buy a motherfucking car," and because I hadn't had my own car in a while, um, and I was um, talking to somebody I knew that worked at the veterans home, and it was the maintenance guy, and he was nice. Um, uh, most people thought he was weird because they didn't understand his humor, but let me put it this way: he walked around talking about "Hello, governor," and I get that because I grew up on that shit. So I, I thought he was funny. Um, but I'm backwards too. So it's whatever. <laughs> so anyway, me and him hit it off cause we're both silly and, um, he was a good friend to me. And, um, you know, I, we just goofed around and, and told stories and jokes and shit and everything. And we got to know each other and come to find out as soon as I mentioned needing a car, turns out he was trying to sell one, the one I'm sitting in right now. It's just some little SUV, but it's good. It's a um, Honda CRV. <laughs> I was gonna say Kia Sportage. That's not right. That was my first car. That's always in my head for some reason. I don't. But um, it's it's a good little car. It's 2002, so the damn thing's 20 years old. But uh, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, it's never it, it's never really put me through hell. Well, one time it did once, but that's another that's a whole other story. Anyway, so he mentioned the car and. I thought, Honda CRV. Let me look that up. Well, I went, I went home and looked it up, and um, it was just what I was looking for. And I was like, Oh my God! I, I texted him. I said, Listen, man, if you could, you know, do me a solid and sell it to me, <laughs> I would really appreciate it. And he bumped his price down and everything for me because it was two thousand, and he was like, All right, let's do fifteen hundred. And I said, oh, You're unbelievable. And I spent another. 1500 getting it fixed because it because I there wasn't that much wrong with it. I was gypped. The guys at the fucking um express oil knew I didn't know what was going on and they bet me over for 1500, excuse me, 1600. So, anyway, whatever. Uh, I that's why women are so afraid to take their car to the shop because they know they're gonna get lied to. Um, <clears throat> anyway, that guy's uncle, um, that who who sadly he admired so much. Um, maybe not now after I tell you this, but, um, his uncle uh, worked on that car and knew everything about it. So when the guy sold it to me, he was like, look, if anything goes wrong, take it to my uncle. He won't, you know, fuck you over. Take it to him. Here's this number. And I said, okay. So after Express Oil did what they did, I, I, took I called the guy's uncle because it was it um I had gone on a trip somewhere <laughs> and um the fan in the front that keeps the engine cool had quit and that was the stuff of nightmares because of where I was I was in some little rinky dink town in Georgia that wasn't even on the map I was riding with a stranger I'd given a, that I had been recruited to give a ride to that I didn't know for an event I was going to uh, he was trustworthy. He was okay, you know, because of the people I was around, it was fine, but it was just, you know, it was a shitty ass situation. <laughs> and, um, so the damn thing had quit and I had to have it towed. I, I, and I didn't have, I went with cheap insurance, um, because I've been poor for so long. I'm used to just doing whatever's cheapest. And I had 
no towing on the thing. And I had $400 to my name that day when it quit on me in Georgia. And I had, and it took every fucking dime that I had left to have this bitch towed from wherever the fuck in Georgia, um, back to Pell City, Alabama. And that was a two plus hour ride. That was like at least a two hour ride, if I remember right. So, um, 400 bucks to have it towed back because I didn't have fucking towing on the thing. And, you know, after that, <clears throat> um, I called, I called my friend's uncle and had him come look at it and replace that fan on the front, which now I see that I could have done my fucking self because it wasn't difficult. I could have gone and bought it myself and I could have fucking replaced it myself. All he did was unscrew the things on the plastic part in the front, pull the, the old fan out and put the new one in and screw them back in. That's like changing a tire. It's the same thing. I thought, well, Christ, I could have done this and saved 125 fucking dollars. So I, I, while I was trying to do business with this guy, he, it was all he could do to make small talk with me about God knows what and complain real bad about women. And this guy had white hair and it was, he, he was really doing his best to let me know what he thought of us and how awful we are because his ex-wife whatever spent his money I don't know what the fuck it was not like he made money you know he was in clothes he's probably been wearing 20 fucking years but um he let me know real quick what he thought of women I thought well goddamn you know I don't have to give you any cash I can just sit here and fucking look this up on fucking YouTube you know I don't why but for some reason I let him push me the fuck around well it's because women are taught to let men tell them what to do <laughs> and I let him push me around and I went ahead and paid him after all that talk about how awful my, my species is. I went ahead and paid him anyway and he replaced the fucking stupid ass fan that I will never let pay anyone to ever do again. And, um, he, I, I gave him my debit card cause I said, I said, well, look, whatever, go take this to the store. Cause if you fuck up, I know who you are. It's not like you can, you know, it's not like you're going to get away with anything. So take this card, go to the store, get, get whatever fan you need, pick it out and come back and fix it. Whatever. I was going to sit in the apartment cause it was sweltering outside. And he was like, Oh no, no, I don't take people's cards. And I thought, oh, Christ, so I had to get my shoes on and get in his truck with him. And he's going to try to hold my hand and heave me into the truck. I said, look, I probably weigh more than you do. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm clocking in at at least 160. And this guy was skin and bones. So all this money he said he had, I don't know where it is because <laughs> he sure as hell isn't eating. Um, but he tried, he was going to like put his hand out and help me into the truck. I said, no, I, I got it. I'm okay. I can probably bench press you. Put your hand back on the steering wheel. So we go to the fucking, uh, what you call it? Well, Riley's whatever the fuck, AutoZone, one of them. <laughs> get the damn fan and get out of there. Get back to the apartment. And he's bullshitting. And it was hot outside because we're, you know, right on top of the sun here in Alabama. Um, we like that kind of thing. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was bringing him water and shit like that because it was fucking boiling outside and he was taking the opportunity to try to make small talk with me or whatever. And I, I he was kind of pathetic and I felt bad for him. So I thought, no, I'll, I'll keep him company for a little bit. It's fine. I, it's fine. And, <laughs> I talked to him for a little bit and was just friendly with him and, and being this, this, this friendly, being this friendly will get you in trouble because when you, when you give them a, a nano inch, they're going to take it a kilometer because anything is a green light, anything. And he was like, all right, you know, uh, the game is afoot, you know, and, um, he was, um, really talking about me and him going out and eating and, and, uh, getting to know each other. And his excuse for that was, um, well, I like to be in good company. And I just thought, I'm not a goddamn prostitute. You know, what you're here to fix the vehicle. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> you know, I, I don't hire people to fix things and then go on dates with them as, as a thank you. That's not what I do. I, I, I don't come from a part of society that allows for that. My father would have a shit fit if he could have just manifested and strangled that guy. I think he would have. 
because this wasn't some 20 year old that didn't know any better. This guy had white hair <laughs> and he was, you know, really trying to get up in me. <clears throat> I hope all that recorded because it just paused. So I don't know how that works. So this guy was really, um, handcuffing himself to me. And I just thought, oh, fucking hell, fucking hell, mate. Why? I just want you to fix something. I can't hire somebody to fix something without having to, uh, uh, hire a fucking bodyguards along with it. I don't even think I'm that big of a goddamn deal, but a lot of people apparently do because I can't get away from anybody. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so I finally got him out of there. And, um, that was a feat in and of itself, getting him away from the apartment. But I, I finally did. And the damn car was fixed and it ran fine after that. So he did fix it. But I mean, just the, the, the trade-off was, was grueling. Well, at that time, I had just finished my pharmacy tech class and got hired um, at a Walgreens in the next town over in Talladega. Well, I went ahead and started there. I, I started my first day, and I pulled up to the place. This is after the guy had bugged the hell out of me so much that I had to... Um, um, quit talking to him and I, I had to ignore his calls and stuff like that because he was really getting out of hand and I was like this you know why am I still having to deal with this I thought after you hit a certain age like they just quit looking at you you know what I mean that's that doesn't work that doesn't work nothing works nothing works um they bug you until they die <clears throat> so <laughs> after I had ignored a bunch of phone calls I got this job a couple weeks later um at the Walgreens and the pharmacy and I went down there and the lady that hired me was nice but she uh, obviously didn't have the same trials in life that I did <laughs> and um, didn't see what the issue was about um, him following me into work and showing up and standing at the pickup window at the pharmacy smiling at me didn't pick up medicine we hadn't had nothing there to had no business being in there but was standing there smiling at me because what happened was I pulled up to the Walgreens parked. Okay. Got out of the car. Well, he recognized that vehicle. Obviously, he's worked on it a million times. So, he knew what this was. <laughs> because his motherfucking workplace, Jared's Alignment in Talladega. I'm going to tell you the guy's name at the end of it, too. I'm not going to protect his motherfucking ass. <laughs> not after how he made me feel. But it's Jared's alignment in Talladega, and the job I got was with Shirley or Sheila, whatever the fuck her name was, at the Walgreens right next door to it. And she was nice, but like I say, she didn't feel sorry for me, I guess. Well, I parked, and the car was in the parking lot in such a way that it was facing the Jared's alignment. So he saw the front of the vehicle and was like, hmm. So I'm getting out of the car, and he's walking up up that little hill. And I just thought, you've got to be motherfucking joking me. You know, it's just, no, 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 no. I didn't have a fucking gun. I didn't have a fucking knife. Nothing. I had nothing except my keys. And I thought, well, the only trick I can remember that I've learned that you do with car keys is to put it up in the base of their skull in the back, right there, to stop. Well, you could get them there, too, obviously. But, I mean, like, I just, you know, when you're, when men do that shit where they follow you and corner you and make you think you can't do anything to save your own life that's how that feels I don't care what y'all say that's how we feel when you start doing that shit and you wonder why we start acting crazy it's because we think you're about to strangle us and that's what I thought he was going to do and we were the only motherfuckers out there because it was 8 o'clock in the fucking morning on a fucking Monday or Sunday or some shit like that and nobody was out yet. Nothing was open. Whatever. It was just me and him outside. And I looked around. No one. No one. And uh, I walked quickly to the door and was like doing this shit and trying to pry it open because it was locked but not locked all the way. They do that for employees who know how to open it. And I was like, you know, trying to, uh, trying to get the fucking door open. Well, um he's getting closer and closer and then he kind of puts his arms out like Jesus and was like what so we're not talking anymore 
So we're not goddamn talking anymore. What the fuck are we goddamn talking about? What, are the, what is there to talk about? I don't want to talk to you. Why do you want to, what, 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 you know? <laughs> you just, you feel like you're losing your fucking mind because you can't get somebody to leave you the fuck alone so you can live your fucking life. All I wanted to do was go to work, get my little tiny paycheck, and go home without somebody making me think I was going to get strangled. And that's not how life works. So uh, he just got closer and closer. I got in the door and closed it shut and um, met the manager somewhere in the store. Because I already had her on the phone talking about open this fucking door. You know, I, I was I was moving as fast as I could because I, I knew I didn't have anything on me. And I thought, well, I, I don't have the chest strength to push him off. I've got legs like a horse, but I don't know if I don't, I just don't know what my skill set is. <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> so I got inside, closed the door behind me. I thought, okay, I'm safe. It's like being in a medieval castle with the mo with the thing around it. And she was like, are you okay? And I said, look, I don't, I'm not trying to ruin the first day. And I'm really terribly sorry about this. I was apologizing. I was apologizing. And which I should not have. I said, look, there's a guy out there who's, who's going to make today difficult. I don't really know that much about him, except that I hired him to fix my vehicle. And now I can't get away from him. And she said, oh, well, no, don't worry about that. Come on. It's okay. She just, you know, had obviously never had that problem. I want to add this tidbit. Women who have never been followed and women who haven't been looked at aren't going to understand what I'm saying. And I'm not trying to be a bitch about it. I'm not trying to be mean, you know, or heartless or anything like that. But I'm, I mean, very plain and simple. There's going to be women who have no clue what the hell I'm talking about because they've never had anybody obsess over them. Never had anybody look at them like this, nothing. And they're going to tell me I'm crazy or they're going to shrug and look the other way because they don't understand what I'm saying. Fine. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> You've lived in peace. Be glad. So, um, <laughs> so I got into Walgreens, let my heart rate come back down to 65 like it's supposed to. Realign my chi. Wish I could have had a drink. Um, but I did everything else I could. <laughs> got a Coke. <laughs> And clocked in and started doing the computer training, you know, because you always have to do three days of that before you start anything now. So I was in her office. And I thought, okay, I'm safe. And um, at, by lunchtime, she already had me because I'd taken the class and I, I'd made good grades and stuff. So she was like, okay, so don't worry about the training so much. Let's get you in here. So I was already in the pharmacy with my hands on pills and shit like that without knowing the rules or anything. Like I did from the class, but each pharmacy is run real different. And she just, I guess, trusted me and threw me in there. It was okay. It was just moving really fucking fast. Because Walgreens Pharmacy is, is that place you need like a team of 50 to run it because they, they wear them out. They run them into the ground. Because there's never enough technicians for anything. So... And the drive through bing, 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 that was atrocious. Uh, I, God bless anyone that works that, because that, that was the stuff of nightmares. But um, anyway, so I'm back there moving, moving with the pills, you know. I was doing okay. Well, <clears throat> come to find out, <laughs> right around lunchtime, I want to say, I turn around, I look up, because everything's real close-knit in a, in a uh, pharmacy that's not... You can look up and, and pretty much see everything, right? I look up and the pickup pie window is right there. <laughs> you know, the pickup window. And he's standing there looking through the glass or whatever, the plastic shield, um, grinning at me. A real big grin. It's just standing there. And the pharmacist, thank God, on high, was like 300 fucking pounds. Might have been fat, but at least he was... 10 times the size of what you call it. I'm going to give his name. Ed Bishop. Ed Bishop. Talladega, Alabama. Please stay the fuck away from him. Um, <laughs> so, the pharmacist, I, I called him aside um, and I said, look, that guy's not here to buy anything. Um, 
I hired him to fix my car and I can't get rid of him. I can't get rid of him. And this guy was big and he was like, okay, okay. He, he didn't, he didn't ask me, he didn't ask me any fucking questions because he knew, he knew I wasn't bullshitting because the guy was standing there smiling at me like, you know, uh, he had dressed me up and was real proud of me. You know what I mean? Like he just couldn't help himself. And the pharmacist told him, look, you know, if you're not buying anything, we've got a line behind you. And then we did because that place was fucking, that place was happening. And there was all these people standing there waiting around for who did need medicine. And he was like, look, if you're not buying anything, I need you to step aside because <laughs> look at the people behind you. And he's kind of like slowly made his way out of there. Well, the manager came in there and I said, look, that guy um, is going to make us miserable. Um, until a man intimidating enough tells him he can't bother me anymore. Because <laughs> that's all that works. Or maybe the police. If the police officer is big, it, it might work. So, um, <clears throat> the manager who hired me was like, <laughs> oh, don't worry about him. I know him. Uh, my, my, my sister's cousin's son-in-laws, whatever the fuck, you know, everybody knows everybody. I hate that shit. Because you can't tell somebody something about somebody because uh, everybody else who knows them is going to say, oh, so-and-so would never do that. No, yeah, they would because they did it to me. And they did it to me because they know I don't know them. That's why it was okay to show the true colors. But another, we'll go over that some other time. But, um, so I said, look, this guy's going to give me hell. So, I mean, just do whatever it is you do, you know, but I'm telling you, this is going to be hard. This is not my first time being followed. <clears throat> so I know how bad this is going to get before it finally dissipates. And she's like, ah, eh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, okay, you've obviously never been looked at. Okay. And, you know, like I, I, I could except that, you know, I was like, all right, you know, no one's ever bothered you. <laughs> Fine. You'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean. Cause this is going to escalate like a motherfucker and escalate it did. So she told me, oh, well, now he, he chit chats with everybody in here. Now he makes small talk that he follows people around like that. Cause he was following me around the store and shit. And, um, she was like, oh, no, he follows everybody around here. I said, now, does he does he just follow young women, or does he follow men around and chit-chat with them as well? So, you know, she was like, oh, uh, uh, uh. I hate it when people try to tell me shit, because I already know. And I was like, just please don't try to bullshit me, because I'm not stupid. So, <laughs> um, so, he left. He did finally leave the store. He, he fooled around for a little while, but he did finally leave. Well, the end of the day came around, and I was like, all right, it's showtime. Because he's going to be out there waiting. And I was fucking right. He was. I'm never fucking wrong about bad stuff. Never, 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 never. I knew Dad was going to die, and he didn't have anything wrong with him. I still knew he was going to die. And in fact, I knew the moment he died, because I woke up at midnight which was right when he left. But with you, that's we'll get to that later. So, I always know when bad shit's about to happen. It just it never fucking fails. And I thought this is this is about to blow up. And I was right. We got out to, I got out to the car. Me and that big pharmacist were the last ones to leave. So, um we got out there. And I thought, okay, thank God. At least I'm with somebody huge. <laughs> um and we were parked side by side and we got to our cars and he got in his car and sat there for a few minutes and was able to witness this. I got in my car, this one, and of course it was still facing Jared's alignment next door, right? So, um, laughing boy is already in his big shiny pickup truck cause he's important and he's coming out into the little side road that separates us. And then you would turn and come to the main road and take your left or right, right? So he's coming to this little road here and is facing me. Well, um, as he's facing me from his truck, he's waving furiously, you know, like kind of like somebody with mental problems. 
just like waving like a fucking maniac in a, in a horror movie. And I was sitting in this car and I said, you need to go that way. Go that way. Go away. Go away. Go away. And it was like all I could do to gesture, get the fuck away from me. And he sat there with a real puzzled look on his face like, hmm. And I thought, if I could, if my, if I could just turn my hand into a pistol and put you out now, I think I would. Because I just want you to leave me the fuck alone. But I was doing this, go away, go away, go away. You know, <clears throat> and he sat there really acting crazy for a few seconds. And then finally, I just gave him the finger. Because, like, I, could, I was being pushed to the point where I thought, well, if, you know, if my safety is, is at stake here, uh, you know, I may as well go down in flames. You know, like, I will go down in glory. So, fuck you. You know, I hope this is on the fucking Walgreens security camera. Which it would have been. Because um, <laughs> there's cameras all over that place. And he was like, hmm, well, guess I'll go then. And then finally, he started driving towards the street and left. And the pharmacist, thank Christ on high, the pharmacist was parked next to me. And he got out of the car. We both got out of our cars together. And he said, is that that guy? I said, yes. He was like, man, we can't have that. That's not kosher. We're going to have a meeting about this. We're going to do something about this because that, that can't be, that's not going to work. And I said, oh, thank you. I thought, finally a man witness what I'm going through. Finally, finally, finally. Somebody, somebody fucking knows. Finally. You know, I'm, I'm not pulling this stuff out of my ass. I really do get followed. <laughs> so, but he, but the right person saw it and he was like, that's, we can't have that. So after he left, we both left. I finally was crying. By the time I got on the road, I was finally crying. And because I thought this guy knows where I live, he now knows where I work, he knows what I drive, he's he knows I've got a kid, he knows there's no man at home. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. Um. And his nephew, who was still my friend at the time, I I, I texted him and I said, I don't know <laughs> what your uncle's problem is, but. I'm going to start carrying a gun on me, and if he pushes me, I'm going to shoot him. I'm going to shoot him. And it's going to be too damn bad. I said, you don't understand. I said, I'll tell you what all he's done later, but I'm telling you right now, I'm afraid for my safety, and I can't go to work or home without worrying about him following me. So if, if you get a call from the police, just know that it was going to be me or him. And it sure as goddamn fuck wasn't going to be me. So, and he was like, wow, I can't believe he would do that. And I said, well, you just haven't seen him around women. So, because men see each other when they're around each other. And then when they split up and go around women, it's a different fucking story. So, um, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, I got on the main road and decided I was going to go straight to the police station, which was right down the street. It's like a five minute drive cried the whole way there. Got out. No one there. Nobody there. It was getting to be sunset. It was getting dark. I did circles around that building, banging on glass, doors, everything. If, if I had a jackhammer, I'd be trying to go through the bridge just to get inside. All of it locked up. Nobody there. Nobody answering the phone. No faces. No cars running outside. Nothing. And I was fucking frantic because I thought, you know what, I, this guy probably knows I'm here and there's nobody fucking out here and he's going to come out here and strangle me and that's going to be it. And I'm going to die just like all those poor old 1980s women that made the fatal mistake of telling somebody no, you know, <laughs> oh, that's all I could think. I'm just going to be some other girl with a perm on TV and they're talking about, well, you know, we found her in the dumpster three months later, you know, just, so I, I was losing it. And I was on the phone. And then finally, I just stood there at the police station with no one there except the fucking birds. And I called 911 and I said, I don't know where the hell everybody is, but somebody's following me and somebody important better show up like yesterday. Because I'm, if I go down, I'm going to be right here on y'all's camera. That's the best I can tell you. And she was like, everybody's out on patrol right now. We're going to send somebody over. And finally, someone showed up. 
and um, I was standing in my car, uh, mascara down, you know, uh, all of it. And I told him everything that happened. And he said, look, <clears throat> you wouldn't believe how common this is. I said, oh no, sir. <laughs> no, sir, I would. I would believe how common it is because I've done this before. You know, <laughs> this isn't my first rodeo. This is not the first time I've, I've thought I was going to die. <laughs> um, because somebody wanted to get between my legs that bad. Um, and it's like a goddamn diamond mine down there. So I guess, you know, <laughs> my husband would say so. But anyway, um, and the rest of them would too. Um, but <laughs> he's patient with me and actually lets me be myself. That's why I married him. So, um, <laughs> I told the cop everything and he's like, you, you, you wouldn't, this. he was like, look, this is grotesquely common. And I said, no, nah, I, I know that I, I, <laughs> I, let's skip that part. What, what can you do? He was like, well, he hasn't necessarily done enough that I can pin him with something, but if he pushes in any farther, you got to call me. And I said, all right. And that's always what it is. That's uh, fucking OJ got <laughs> you know, he, he bothered her and bothered her and bothered her and, um, what you call it, um, was saying, was telling her friends, remember she was telling everybody, he's going to kill me. He's going to kill me. And everybody was like, nah. And the police said, nah. And then she got her head cut off just about. So that, th that is how it happens. They know just where to stop to where you can't do anything. And then you're in a, and then you're in a puddle of blood. So say la vie, I guess. But <clears throat> I thought, no, this isn't going to cut it. This isn't enough. If you can't, if, if uh, the man using his own system, he's put in place in our society to protect, protect me, can't do anything about this. I'm going to have to be the man I need as per usual, which is story of my life. And I'm going to have to help myself somehow. So I thought, okay, you know, what can I do? Now, I did have a gun. I owned one at that time. And I just didn't have the sense to carry it with me. Because the people here usually, usually are a lot safer to be around um, than that. And, and I just didn't, I wasn't in the habit of carrying it. You know, I, I didn't feel like I was in danger. And it just, you know, it wasn't like being in Virginia Beach where this stuff happens all the time because those guys are, are, are bad crazy and, and they followed me a lot but um, it didn't happen I didn't have any problems other than this one guy I haven't had any issues with anybody at all at all except for the women getting jealous of me but that that wasn't I don't have to carry a gun for that um, all I have to do is ask them questions about who the fuck they're talking about and then all of a sudden it stops so that's easy um <laughs> but anyway I left the police station he was like look go straight home if anything else fucking happens call me I said okay wish me luck because I guess you can't follow me back so, because everybody was on patrol, I just thought, you don't have anyone in the fucking building at all? <laughs> well, whatever, you know. Alright, so I left. It was already dark. I cried all the way home, because I was just like, I couldn't take any more of this shit. And, um, got in the house, hugged my mother, and I hadn't, I hadn't hugged her, I hadn't hugged her genuinely in a long time, but that night I did. And, because she's been through that shit, too. Um, the only difference is that was in the 80s when you really had to stalk somebody to get information about him. You couldn't just Google him. <laughs> and she's got some stories. Um, but she looked like something out of a magazine. So, I, I'm not surprised. But it's just, it just sucks. And she understood my anguish and just, you know, hugged me and let me cry. And then we went inside and, um, I saw my son. I saw we were safe and everything. I thought, okay, th this will be the last time I leave the house without a firearm. 
and I had had it in the safe under my bed and I just thought you know what this thing is is gonna come with me everywhere I go no matter what I'm doing because I, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, this is going to be the last time I ever feel like somebody might be about to kill me and I can't do anything about it. This would be the last goddamn time. Um, and I loaded it, put in a little case thing and put it in the glove box in the glove compartment. And that's, and that's where it was for a long time until I bought another one uh, to keep in there, which is in there now. And I don't even have to think with that one. There's no safety or anything. You just pick it up and start pull the trigger. So I'm 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 over feeling bad, uh, um, you know, um, about any of it. I'm just I just don't I don't I don't feel bad about it anymore because I've been in so many positions like that. What I just described, where. I thought I was, I was about to have somebody's hands around my throat or I was getting cornered and I couldn't get anybody to help me. I couldn't get the right people involved, you know, or it wasn't enough to, to pin him with something. You know, it, 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 there's always some fucking excuse as to why I can't get somebody to help me and protect me from a man. That it's all, it always plays out like that. I'm fine now because I'm married and the house is fucking full of guns <laughs> and we have an alarm system and we're up on a hill. Um, there's a lot of people that whose cars can't even probably can't even make that hill. So it's like I'm, I'm you know, it's different now. And then the, what you call it's dogs over here, seeing all hours of the day and night. So them and them. So it, you know, I'm I'm much 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 safer now. I'm I'm safer now, and I live better now than I ever have in my life. Period. So I don't worry about it now. <clears throat> But I swear to God, that was that day that he, that guy followed me like that. That was the last time I left the house without a gun on me. And there are people in other countries, and there's other Americans who have the nerve to say, Oh, guns are bad. You shouldn't be. No, you know what's bad is men trying to screw. That's bad because they, they terrorize us. They terrorize us. And anytime a woman kills somebody and that gets on TV and everybody's talking about it, whatever, She's usually got some kind of outrageous mental problem that's just never been treated. <laughs> oh, well, she's crazy as hell. That's why she's got eight different, you know, personalities. But when men do it, it's, oh, well, that's so weird. You know, that guy was so nice. I don't know. He was so normal. He just went to work every day. And, uh, you know, I don't know. He was kind of quiet, but, you know, was anything wrong with him? That's so weird that he would kill some girl. That That's weird. That's weird. You know, I think that's weird. That's so weird. It doesn't seem like he, would, he was so normal. You know, that... Uh, kiss my ass. <laughs> kiss my yoga belly dance ass. <laughs> I'm just over it. So, but that's... I mean, that's how that always plays out. And I, I'm just... I don't feel bad about it anymore. I don't feel bad about it. And I won't if I have to shoot somebody to keep them from stalking me. You know, I'm not, because, uh, you know, and especially with a kid at home, I'm not going to let you follow me home and, and put him in danger too. You know, no, there's no way. You know, I just, the sh we're having the shootout now. We're going to do this here in the Walmart parking lot. You, I'm not going to take you home with me. You know, I'm not going to let you know where I live. Um, he'll be able to find my life coach stuff online because my fucking thing is on the back of the window, but... <laughs> <clears throat> just, you know, but that's why I, I have to have a gun when I leave the house. That's why. And it's because they, they can't take no for an answer. And, they'll, and they're willing to make you feel like you're in danger. You know, just to let you know they want to screw. I mean, I, you know, if, if, you're, if you're so much of a pussy that... Because they won't challenge each other with it. They don't dare challenge each other these days. They're too damn afraid of each other. Um... Because they've been softened that much. So you don't ever see men fighting or even... They don't even correct each other these days. When one of them's doing wrong, you don't see the other one standing around saying, Hey, stop that. You don't ever see that. Nobody wants to correct anybody because they're too fucking afraid of each other because they're pussies. You know, there was a time when you actually had to keep people in line in order to protect the community. 
that's all gone to hell. But, you know, it's just, <laughs> we live in strange times. So, but that's why um, women like me are so crazy. It's because we get followed. <laughs> and I'm never going to leave the house without this revolver because I don't think it's funny and I don't think it's cute because it's not it's not charming it's not exciting it's not fun you know if it's that bad that women aren't looking at you and aren't giving you attention to the point where when one of them gives you money to fix something you've got to be down her throat um, you probably just need to get a prostitute they're everywhere they just can't say it because it's illegal. You have to find them. But that's pretty easy because you can get online and do that too. <laughs> I mean, but if it's that goddamn bad, you know, that you just you got to screw. It, there, there's people you can pay for that. And there are people that will take money for that. <laughs> God love them. <clears throat> um, but that's, that's why women like me are just crazy. We're just crazy. And we overreact. So... <laughs> But I thought that would be a good story about why the fuck I don't leave the house without a gun anymore. Because <clears throat> I don't want to get strangled when I tell somebody, no, we're not going to fuck. That's why I have to carry a gun. <laughs> <coughs> now, this is the South and everybody else has guns too. So, it's like no one thinks it's weird. You know, if I was in Virginia Beach, if I, if I was back there, uh, everybody would get real scared, you know, because that's... It, that's mostly run by Yankees, and they don't they don't do things the way we do it, which is why we went to war. Um, but so uh, that that's another tangent for another. I can't get on that right now. We'll be here all day, but uh, that's why. So I figured it was a good opportunity for story time. Um, because what I the story I just told you has been experienced by women on this planet and others and <laughs> you know men will tell us oh, she's just crazy she's just overreacting she's overreacting if your life was in danger half as much as, as ours was uh, but I can't win it's whatever if you don't get it you don't get it and there's plenty of women who will watch this video and say, you know, that bitch is crazy, man. I don't know what she's talking about. That's because no one's looking at you. And that's because you've never been followed because no one's looking at you. They don't want you. <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to say that, but that's what it is. If no one's looking at you and nobody's pursuing you, then you're not going to know what the fuck I'm talking about. And now that I've got this haircut, it's even worse. <laughs> I don't know why they liked it. I had it long before. They liked the braids too. God knows. Um, but you know, now that I've got a fresh haircut, it's like, you know, I'm getting grunts and moans and comments and things like that when they walk past me. You know, like it's we're going back to that. You know, I I, I really went backwards after I got the haircut. <clears throat> so it's whatever. But it's it's. I'm still safer now than I ever have been. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. But anyway, just thought I would tell you that story and explain myself <laughs> and the rest of us. So um, thanks for listening. <laughs>